boats. If you live in the Kootenays, chances are that you've either seen or been on a boat more than once. But the boats today aren't at all like the ones in the past. Most boats from back in the late 1800s to early 1900s weren't really used in the same way. The SS Nisukin was launched in 1913 and was the flagship for the CPR as they prepared for an influx of tourists in southern British Columbia. With the completion of the rail line, the SS Nisukin was retired in 1930, but in 1931 she resumed work as an automobile ferry for the government. The Nisukin ran between Fraser's Landing, downstream from Balfour, and the end of the highway in Boswell on the east side of Kootenay Lake. When the highway to Grey Creek was completed, she reduced her travel and went from Fraser's Landing to Grey Creek. For this work, the overhanging deck at the bow was removed to allow larger vehicles to park across the bow. When the water levels dropped in 1949, the Nisukin had rested on a concrete wall previously submerged. With no support underneath, her back broke. She was sold in 1950 to Earl Cutler and was then stripped for parts. The hull and remaining pilot house and ladies' observation deck were towed upstream in 1954. The last two structures were converted into a craft store and a private residence. The SS Moyer's story all began when it first finished being built in Nelson on October 22, 1898. It was then christened, given a name, and readied for passengers. The SS Moyer's job was to carry railway passengers from the Crow's Lines Nest Western Terminus at Kootenay Landing to Nelson and Proctor. It was known as the Crow Boat and continued this service until 1906. In 1906, the SS Kuskinook overtook the Crow's Boat and the Moy began her long career carrying freight, excursions, and other duties, with the lake traffic much reduced and the major overhaul due in 1957, the SS Moy was retired from the service and tied up at Proctor. She was then sold to the city of Kasla for one dollar and towed to the Kasla Bay by the tugboat SS Grand Hall. In July 1958, she was pulled ashore by a capstans, a vertical axled machine that winded rope from the Nelson shipyard and began her second career as a historic site and museum. Uh, my full name is Jeff Delves. I'm the uh, maintenance manager for the SS Moy and tour guide. Uh, the Moy was built in 1898 in Nelson. I mean, it's a stern wheeler and it's important to note that this, the Moy is the world's oldest uh, intact passenger stern wheeler. And so there's two, two engines, one here and one there, and they're operated by steam. And so you can see the main st steam pipe that comes right from the boiler at the front. The ladies' salon, um, so there's mostly ladies and children back here. At the front there would have been the men. And this is the firebox, and uh, we had uh, one fireman standing down there shoveling coal like mad. He, uh, he did six hour shifts and he could shovel coal at about the equivalent of one ton an hour. The tour guide didn't show up and I said, oh, you know what, I'll do it, I think I know. So I've been doing tours ever since. It's not really part of my job description, but it's kind of fun. In 1898, the SS Minto and her sister ship, the SS Moy, were assembled by the CPR. But the CPR directors decided that it would be a waste of money to send more vessels to that area. Because of the mining discoveries and fast-paced development in the Arrow and Kootenay Lakes, the CPR had decided to send prefabricated pieces of the boats to Nacuspa and Nelson so that they could be immediately built to participate with the transportation booming in those areas. The SS Minto Preservation Society was formed in Nacusp when the CPR sold the Minto to the town for a dollar in 1954. But in May 1956, they sold her to the Columbia Trading Company of Nelson because of the lack of public support and vandalism that had happened over the two years that they were keeping her. She was to be scrapped and her parts sold. They took out her boiler, stern wheel, and brass work.
But before she was completely salvaged, John Nelson stopped it and then bought her from the Columbia Trading Company of Nelson for $800. She was then towed to Galena Bay by the tugboats Octagon and Pentagon in 1956. This momentous occasion was recorded by several movie cameras as the SS Minto's final voyage. John Nelson's plans to restore her were not fully realized from the time he had purchased her, and 12 years later, this caused the Minto to slowly rot away. When John had passed away in 1967, a decision had to be made because of BC Hydro's work on the lake. They had offered to move the boat and such had it surveyed to estimate the cost of moving and restoring it. At that time, it would have been about $100,000. With Walter not having that kind of money, he had decided to take her out into the middle of the lake and lit her ablaze. She burned down and now her hull sit sits at the bottom of Galena Lake. I am Green Roy E, and uh, I have been uh, living in, in Caslow since, uh, for a permanent time, since 1927, in October of 1900. There we boarded the steamship Moyer, which had been newly uh, placed in service on the Kootenai Landing, or Kuskanook, as uh, some people call it, a run from, uh, to Nelson. And uh, she uh, related in latter years, when I could understand, she related many, many uh, incidents and uh, much of her experience on that train trip, and uh, also the boat trip from Kuskanook to Nelson. Uh, evidently, travel in those days was rather primitive, but uh, the people who were traveling were a very kind uh, group of people and she said that she enjoyed her trip thoroughly. Uh, we made the, the trip into Nelson on the Moyer and from there to Castle the following morning on the International where we were introduced to our family. Uh, those days, although they had the town had passed the period of being a very raw pioneer boom town. It was still in the rough stages. With the retirement of sternwheelers, it was a loss of an art and profession. Many small communities and towns relied on sternwheelers to deliver supplies and tourists to keep them afloat. Without these sternwheelers, these communities and towns started to die out. Halcyon Hot Springs, for example. It was very popular but had no road access, so when the SS Minto was retired, it slowly died. With the use of boats slowly decreasing more and more, these small little pit stop communities started to die out, and all that was left was the towns that had roads or railways connecting them. 